Okay, so recording is there. Now, the, the, the problem now okay. that I have is that um, the presentation is very small, but can you see the presentation? Um, it's very, very small. Uh, so I'll continue with that. I don't know how I got to, to have such a small um, presentation, but anyways, I'll continue with that uh, because the land, the time is going by. So it, the... Um, one, one positive aspect of the customary tenure is that it's kind of a social safety net. So a person can build a house, grow food, and um, 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 there's, um, uh, so there's no tax and um, so at least people can, can, uh, can survive. Um, and then in customer areas in Zambia, there's an individual ownership, concurrent interests, and communal interests are recognized. Um, what's happening now, certainly around Lusaka here, I'm not sure if it's like that across the whole country, but uh, people from Lusaka are, are coming in, buying up land from the, uh, uh, from the villagers and putting up fairly large houses. So alongside the, the traditional huts. So, um, so in a way, the local populations are being displaced. Um, so it's becoming more apparent that uh, without a stern and effective allocation system in customary law, access to land by the locals is, um, is threatened. And then I like this West African dictum. I conceive of land as belonging to a vast family of whom many are dead, a few are living and countless are still born. People holding land are thus doing so in trust for ancestors and for those who are not yet born, but also the community as a whole. Now, a challenge is this, is that the World Bank argues that customary tenure encumbers commercialization. It is insecure, lacks certainty, and frustrates rural land markets. So that goes quite a bit different with the um, uh, with, uh, customary, the customs of, of, the, uh, of, of the country. The, um, there are bound, boundary disputes, certainly, uh, and international, and probably these are caused from the time, colonial times, uh, disputes between Zambia and Malawi and, and other countries and so on, um, and urban customary disputes. Um, as I mentioned there, the uh, urbanites coming in and, and uh, buying up land and, and so displacing um, areas that would have been used before for, for um, uh, grazing cattle. Uh, disputes between neighbors, uh, disputes between chiefs. Um, but uh, the customary land tenure system continues to survive because it is a product of the people's culture, 
and values and is consistent with the African way of life. And also um, there's the, the, uh, the issue now of women's land rights. Now the statutory um, tenure is the, uh, once the president gives consent to an application of ownership, uh, then a certificate of title is issued. And the um, registered proprietor of a certificate of title is um, protected against ejection or adverse possession. But anyways, th this, this is a, a, a weak because um, there's weak land use planning. Um, the cadastral surveying is, is, not, uh, is not keeping up with, with the demand. Um, and land al allocation and land occupation also are, are pro problematic. There could be invasion on idle land or undeveloped land, underdeveloped land. Um, and then sometimes there are double or multiple allocation of land. Uh, hopefully in the, in the future, that won't be um, uh, as much of a problem as it has been that um, I think we all know what, what that means. Uh, so the, cert the, the certificate of title then is weak. The, um, the economic and financial um, challenges are that uh, certainly the financing for short term um, for small scale farmers is, is, can be problematic. Uh, the cotton, uh, for example, the cotton uh, companies would, would provide some short term financing in the sense that they would offer the seed and the um, inputs, and then that's taken off the uh, product, the sale of the products at the end of the, of the growing season. But short-term financing is usually for working capital and liquidity. And uh, medium-term financing would be more for movable and immovable collaterals. And then sometimes people would guarantee, somebody else would guarantee on your behalf. And long-term financing is probably more prevalent on large fir farms. And um, it's uh, usually for a longer period of time, five to 10 years usually. Um, the loan providers would be uh, commercial banks, uh, microfinancing institutions, uh, investment funds and equity, and uh, agribusinesses, for example, as the, the cotton companies I, I mentioned. The, uh, certainly the uh, MFI, the microfinancing institutions, um, have a very high interest rate that can be as high as 75%, so it's really uh, detrimental for, for any investment. Uh, commercial banks um, would, uh, would also offer financing in both in Quacha and US dollars. And um, the, the, uh, the investment funds and equity, they would probably uh, look at uh, value chains and, and uh, invest uh, very substantially in, in that. <clears throat> the energy needs, the, the, um, the biomass, um, Uh, the biomass um, energy uh, contributes to about 70% of Zambia's energy needs, and, uh, but, and only 30% of uh, Zambia's population has electricity. So uh, uh, I figure I saw that 500,000 people are involved in charcoal production in some, in some way or, not, or another, um, and uh, 79,000 to 150,000 hectares of land are deforested yearly due to charcoal production. So the, the, the challenge is, is that it's, it's uh, the balancing between national development ma and matters concerning environmental protection and food security. So, the, so that's the, you know, that, that balance is, 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 uh, is, is, is sometimes can be problematic. Um, there's a, there was a project in Choma uh, the last few years. And, and in fact, uh, we were, Cassisi was involved with that as well. Um, it was, a project from the FAO called the FFF, the Forest and Farm Facility. Uh, this pilot project was uh, in Zambia, Kenya, Ghana, and Togo. And is looking at sustainable uh, charcoal production because I think I don't think we can say, look, we have to stop charcoal production altogether, but uh, we have to continue with charcoal production, but how how to do it so that it's sustainable. So that's, that's the, the, uh, the crux of the matter. And then, um, so they're, they're looking at um, this project, this pilot project was looking at planting uh, trees 
uh, and uh, for every tree that, that, uh, that, that's cut down. And then not to cut down all the trees, not to clear cut uh, an area, but you, you, you choose the trees and then you leave others so that they can grow. And then also to have improved kilns so that there's, there's to be a, a, a greater um, efficiency of, of the um, production of charcoal. And also then as part of this pilot project was also looking at other forest products such as mushrooms, honey, um, timber and charcoal. In Rufunza, there's a, there's a company called Bi Bicarbon Partners and um, they're, they're paying farmers. This, this group is able to get funding from overseas and paying farmers for keeping not, uh, trees not, not to um, 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 cut down all the trees. On the ecological challenges is that there's great soil degradation uh, a lot of it due to mineral fertilizers and chemical use. Um, also the deforestation that we, we just uh, talked about. Um, I remember a few months ago during the heavy rains in Choma, uh, looking at, at, uh, at the scenes on, on the social media, a lot of water just running on top of the ground. So very poor infiltration. So I think that's another thing that uh, agroecology will help so that the water uh, that rain, the rain will infiltrate into the ground and, and, and uh, fill up the underground aquifers rather than just running off the top of the ground and taking with it sediments and topsoil. Now potassium, which is the one of the uh, main ingredients in, in uh, our fertilizers, that hardens the soil. So that results in poor infiltration. And uh, some of the, some scientists now are saying that there's sufficient potassium in our soils that we don't need to add any potassium. There's enough potassium for the next 8,000 years. Then we have uh, air pollution. I think everybody knows about the air pollution at Chalanga Cement um, and then and, and doing damage to the research station at Mount Makulu. Uh, <clears throat> markets and marketing is also uh, a challenge. Um, so the phytosanitary regulations, especially if, if um, Farmers are going to be uh, selling uh, outside the country, but also uh, constraints within uh, uh, within the country in, in marketing. So there could be um, poor refrigeration for perishables, for example, uh, or insufficient uh, storage facilities for dry goods. Transportation is a problem. Uh, absence of finance, uh, maybe inadequate extension services. Um, so this whole range there that, that, that are marked on, on there. Um, now seed also can be problematic. Only registered seed can be traded as seed. And so that's following the, the US, uh, the distinct uniform and stable. Uh, so that's problematic for OPV uh, seeds. So op open pollinated variety seeds can only be sold as grain and not as, as, um, as seed. And yet uh, OPV maize seed, for example, uh, can be very good. There's, no, there's, uh, there's certainly nothing wrong with it if, if, the, uh, if a good choice is made uh, of, the, um, uh, of, of the seed. Um, the, the difficult challenge with um, hybrid seed is that it's, you have to purchase annually and uh, there's low resistance to uh, diseases or insect, insect pe uh, pests and so on. Whereas the, the open pollinated variety would, would, would have much more uh, resistance to, uh, to um, diseases because of the fact that it's not uniform. It, it's, uh, and, and that's a good thing. Um, and local, there's, a, there's a, lo a local market, a uh, growing local market for uh, Gangata maize, for example. Uh, and GMO are not allowed unless apply to the biosafety registrar and do trials for suitability and safety. But there's also contamination of local seeds. So, if, so if your neighbor has GMO maize seed, and you've got an OPV, uh, there'll be cross pollination, and so you're not going to have a, a a seed that would be GMO free. Uh, gender is also a challenge in in um, in our farming practices, and so there's a need to be more proactive in ensuring women ownership and rights to land, increasing women's knowledge of agroecology. Uh, increasing women's incomes uh, and, and that have the girl child staying at school longer 
and, and a general uh, gender awareness raising among the population. I think I think that that is has taken place. Uh, certainly, there are norms and customary laws that might hamper women's success. There was a, a little booklet which I think I've, I've put onto the on the internet. Um, it's uh, Yapri Stories of Successful Women in Agribusiness. It was done in 2019. And the factors that, that, uh, that showed up in successful women in agribusiness were uh, pooling resources. For example, um, a, a group of women pooling their resources together and, and, and working together, uh, access to training, uh, access to capital, the family support that the woman would have support from her husband and, and maybe from the extended family. Uh, that there's a role model and mentors that would help her. And the character features uh, would be that the, uh, these uh, successful women are determined, they're committed, they're financially disciplined, there's strong desire to improve the communities, patient and hardworking. So they they're, they're also have a, a desire to, to work with the community, not, not solely for themselves. Uh, there's also some uh, challenges that uh, rural support uh, for example, um, there might be insufficient blacksmiths. Blacksmiths are, uh, offer a, a very good service in the, uh, in the, in the rural area in um, providing uh, axes and hoes, um, repairing ox equipment. Um, and the, the agri-servers might not be knowledgeable about um, the, the, about uh, uh, agroecology. Uh, maybe poor internet connectivity and uh, perhaps poor roads and transport systems. And then within the, the farming um, system, uh, there are a myriad of actors, including growers, laborers, labor unions, distributors, processors, retailers, restaurants, input suppliers, investors, consumers, policymakers, researchers, non governmental organizations. And, and et cetera. So to harmonize and have all, all having a similar understanding can be a challenge. Um, you know, the, 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 the policy might be not, not supporting agroecology, for example, or supporting something else. Um, consumers might want something, the, the farmers are unable to meet the consumer's demand. So, that, so, so to have all that harmonized is, is, uh, is, is a challenge. And um, also, it's important to, to look at nutrition because if we, uh, if we don't have a, a monoculture of maize, the, our diet is uh, very limited. Whereas if we have a crop diversification, uh, there's, there's uh, certainly uh, better uh, nutrition, especially for the, uh, for the uh, youth, for the children. And another thing that's happened in the last maybe 30, 40 years is that the food density has decreased by as much as 30% and maybe sometimes even more. And that's mainly due to hybrids and the way that, that farming uh, has been done with uh, researcher looking, researchers looking at emphasizing yields, you know, what, um, what, what is the yield of, of a crop um, as, as opposed to uh, looking as well, yes, you want to look at the yield, yes, but also to look at the nutrition value, the, the, the food density. And one of the things that um, uh, uh, people are looking at now would be the BRICS reading. And a, a BRICS reading is looking at the sugar content um, of, of either the leaf or the, or the, um, the fruit or the vegetable. And the, the BRICS reading should be 12 and above in order to be um, nutritious. And most foods now at, at the, you know, that are grown uh, with the conventional agriculture have a reading of about three. So it's very, very low. And, and uh, also a GMO um, uh, maize, for example, would be about three. They can't get it much above that. So, so the, um, the, the, the uh, nutrition value of, uh, of a GMO uh, maize, for example, is, is extremely low, extremely poor. Uh, a greater consumption of processed and fast foods by urbanites, uh, leading to obesity, heart diseases, diabetes, etc. Um, so the agricultural technologies and production systems can increase the diversity and nutritional value of production. And uh, it, it's been shown that organic agriculture can reach can help reach higher BRICS meetings and improve. Um, um, 
uh, an improved nutrition. So we only have 10 minutes left here, so I have to kind of move a bit. Uh, this is kind of just by the side here, but I noticed that the German Ministry of Food and Agriculture's Federal Ministry, Ministry of a Center of, for Nutrition have um, presented 10 um, um, trends in nutrition for 2022. So they're looking at, uh, for example, the first one, climate friendly and sustainable nutrition. So looking at the way the food is produ produced, uh, looking at more vegan and plant-based diets. Uh, and then the number three, the, the digital nutritional counseling. Um, is um, something that's been more uh, brought forward with the COVID uh, situation we've had in the last two years. Greater awareness of healthy eating. Um, so also looking at, at uh, the nutrition that, uh, in the gut and the probiotics. Uh, certainly a lot of that work has been going on with livestock, but also I think now uh, uh, in human beings. Um, nutrition education and day, daycare centers and schools. So uh, more uh, emphasis on educating children on um, on the need for uh, for proper uh, nutrition. So the the, um, the key policies uh, areas of policy concern include increasing agricultural productivity and incomes, especially for holder smallholder farmers. Uh, emphasis on um, irrigation to reduce over-reliance on rain-fed agriculture in the face of limited high-potential agricultural land. But also in, in line with that, uh, we're also looking at, uh, at um, can we grow crops 365 days of the year or certainly more longer than just the rainy season without air irrigation? So that's something that... that um, I, th I think we, we want to try and, and do some research on that. And I think I think it's possible certainly to add probably another six weeks or so to, to the growing season uh, by, by, by certain technologies without irrigation. So that would certainly add, uh, add a lot to, to um, the possibility of growing more food. And then encouraging diversification into non-traditional agricultural commodities and value addition. And I think value addition is something that, that we have to look at uh, quite a bit. And, uh, and then there's a good, there are good technologies, good equipment now for uh, a value addition at, uh, at kind of village level, maybe not at, at individual farm level, but certainly if in small cooperatives and so on. Um, and increasing the, the nutrient density of foods, uh, encouraging private sector led development of the sector, um, ensuring um, environmental sustainability. And then, as I mentioned, the, the 365 days a year without the irrigation of growing plants. And then another one would be for, um, for government. So yourselves as, as um, camp extension officers to, to identify areas of low potential, medium potential and high potential growth areas. So certainly if you look at, at high potential areas, that would be something that, that you can get you can get success almost immediately. So, uh, and then low potential areas, um, the the potential is there, uh, but at a at a lower scale. But again, we, you know you cannot ignore uh, low potential areas. You, you still have to work on that. And I think with um, organic agriculture or agroecology, um, the, the, there is a chance of improving um, production, improving incomes improving the life, the, the, the nutrition as well, um, even though that it's kind of, we, we could call it a low potential area. And then, um, you know, is it possible to identify districts as organic only? Uh, for example, here in, in um, Chongwe, Rufun, San Luangwa, uh, Alliance Cotton Ginry are, uh, have got the sole right to, to uh, produce only organic cotton. So no, no cotton can be grown in these three districts without uh, unless it's organic. Is there some way of um, uh, also piggybacking backing on that and, uh, and saying that all vegetables grown would only be organic or all the maize grown in these areas? So that's something that's kind of a, a homework that for yourselves when you go back, talk to your, to your DACOs and your PACOs and is, is, that, is that something that's possible? Uh, you know, I don't, I don't know if it is, but, but it might be. 
another issue is the Sea Trade Harmonization Act that's within the SADC uh, region. And uh, a problem with that, that um, I'm not sure just where this act is right now. I don't think it's been enacted yet, but a problem had been that the way it was initially written was that if two countries accepted, for example, GMO seed, all companies, all, all countries within SADC had to accept that as well. So that's, uh, that, that would be a, a, diff, a, 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 a challenge. Uh, FISIP, I don't know, I don't think that I have to say much about that. And, um, but the last one here, I think is, some, is something quite new. Uh, is it possible to have policy measures that would promote the restoration and conservation of healthy functioning ecosystems? Uh, so rather than, than having policies that would look at only at, um, at production, for example, that we look at, 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 uh, at conserving or restoring uh, a healthy functioning ecosystem. So maybe looking at, at uh, a water catchment area. So for example, around here, uh, the Chalambana uh, water catchment or the Ingureri or whatever ca water catchment area you have. So within that, that, that water catchment area that, uh, you know, as, as, as a group, you, it would take quite a bit of work on, on organizing people, but, you know, the, you, everybody decides on restoring and conserve, conserving a healthy functioning ecosystem so that the way the, 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 uh, the, the food is produced, the way the farm is, is, uh, is tilled, et cetera, would all work towards function, uh, a healthy functioning uh, ecosystem. So, uh, it, so that that would that's kind of a, a, a quite a different way of of, of approaching um, our agricultural extension services. So that's the uh, the uh, the end of my presentation. Um, so I don't know if there's anybody um, that would that uh, would like to add some some something to this or would like to ask a question. We still have uh, two minutes to go. Uh, okay, Mr. Imasiko, uh, I see you're, you've raised your hand. Yeah, uh, good afternoon. Good yes, afternoon. My, yes, my, my question, uh, though... Uh, is sorry, can, can you speak uh, louder? I can barely make you out. All right, okay. am I able to be heard now? Yeah, I can hear you now. Yes, my, okay, yes, my question is, uh, is different from the topic of being late. I wanted to find out uh, on the issue of the test, how is it going to be, how, how will be the mode of the test? So okay. that we prepare in that way. Oh, okay. So the, so test will be, us... the test will be on the first, of, the first test, test number one will be on the first of April, which is a Friday. And uh, the, the um, I, I made uh, mention on it that I think it would be units one and two, if I'm not mistaken. So, so you, you know, so the test will not be on, on the whole course, but it'll be limited to those units that I had uh, that I had shown. Okay, because uh, my my concern is on network challenge. So I'm asking, like, how will be the mode of the test? Is it going to be like written or oral? Oh, I see. Okay, no, it'll be it'll be uh, written. So. Uh, we're working on that so that it, it'll be uh, I'll uh, upload it on the on the on the um, on your portal on the student portal, and then anytime during the day you can access it. So you'll have ten minutes once you, once you've accessed it. You have ten minutes to do the the test and then to to submit it. So so it, it's it's going to be done online, and it'll probably it'll probably be. Kind of a true and false, so there won't it will not be anything written. So it'll be kind of a true and true and false of that, you know, kind of that type of, of, of a test. All right, thank you. Okay, you're most welcome. We have less than one minute. So anybody else with a question? It's clear for me. Thank you. Okay, thank you.